Welcome back to our truck camper renovation series. Today where we're going to be working in the bathroom. We're going to remove the standard RV toilet, remove the sink from the bathroom because there's really not enough room in there for it. And we're going to build ourselves a composting toilet. We looked at the different options of composting toilets you can buy. We didn't really find one that we love the price of and um, thought we would just build our own. So all we're starting with is this diverter we got on Amazon and everything else we're gonna build. Follow along. All right, so we gotta get rid of this bathroom sink. Um, I already took out uh, a couple screws out of this front panel. There's two screws there and a couple little angle brackets down on the side there into the wall. And uh, that comes off. And then um, the sink I unthreaded the uh, water lines and undid the drain and that's it I already pulled the uh, sink out and I pulled the lines back out of the uh, the opening for the electrical the hoses actually ran past there so I pulled them outside to get them out of here I'm gonna have to cut off that drain for the uh, sink we don't need that but there's some wiring and um, a uh, water fill fitting there that we'll probably just box in but the sinks on or the toilets unbolted so uh, let's see if we can get that sucker out of there I got a nut off of each side and uh, threaded the water line off the back so simple as that she lifts off, so out she comes. As I was saying about the uh, water lines that went to the sink, I pulled them out of this uh, electrical opening. They ran right by here. And then they still go under the uh, dinette seat. So if I can get at them there, I might just get at them there and cap them there instead of having them run in this cavity at all. Just looking at this, uh, drain for the sink and it goes back over by that uh, electrical cavity too and then up to a vent stack it looks like i may just cut it in there and uh, cap it in there no use doing it here take it back as far as we can there we go just like that i was just checking out the feed for the toilet uh, this is the city water fitting where you would hook your city water input which we really never use but we'll leave it there anyway and then this feed goes down through this storage compartment and up to the toilet and really we don't need any of that so we might as well just get it out of the way that'll do Okay, so that's plugged off now. A little wee bit of water will sit in there, but as long as the rest of the line's drained, it has room to expand, so it shouldn't cause a freezing problem. And uh, down to this guy here, the uh, toilet one will cut that sucker off too. As far as the uh, lines for the sink and the drain for the sink, they've uh, been pulled through. I'm gonna cap them on the other side. And uh, you can see the uh, black pipe there, if you can see. Um, I capped it off, that was the drain for the sink. That's the T where um, it goes up to the vent stack. So I just capped it off there. So get a little bit of stuff out of this space and, um, and then the uh, lines will run them up on the other side and cap them um, closer to the hot water tank. Okay, so in this, uh, what do they call this? Wet bay compartment. This is where you get at the valves for the dump. But uh, the uh, this is the low point drain over here. That goes over to the hot water tank and the other uh, lines. And then this is the one we just cut off inside the bathroom. So that is what ran up to the toilet. And this ran up to the main feed valve. So we don't need that anymore. We're saving weight like crazy. So I've pulled the panel off the back of this dinette uh, seat here. 
and uh, I'm hoping I can pull these lines that I have hanging out of that electrical opening down there pull them up in here and then cap them off all right so those are the two sink lines hot and cold Simple as that, both capped off and I'll just leave them there. They're uh, aiming up so when I drain the water, they really should drain down. We've taken the toilet out. We're going to make a compost toilet. I have the old toilet flange, I took the bolts out of it. I am going to build up the floor a little bit. So we're at the same level as the flange. And that half inch plywood will space up so we get an even floor level. I'll make a, uh, a flange that I can screw down and seal to that toilet flange with a uh, inch and a quarter hose fitting. And then we'll have inch and a quarter hose from our separator into there. And then we can build our box on top of that. I got a couple of uh, pieces of plywood cut just to kind of rough it in and see how it all fits. Um, it's pretty tight uh, front back with the toilet seat, but I um, think we can make it work. I'm going to have to hinge, I'll have to cut this piece, top piece of plywood a little bit out from the wall so it can hinge up. And there needs to be room from the wall out for it to hinge and not hit the wall. I've relocated the heating duct, so that's going to come out here. I can mount the flange up in the front there. I use a five gallon pail. I did have to cut down the bucket a little bit for this to fit nice on it. I wanted that diverter a little bit farther away from the toilet seat, like as far away as I could. I could have just set it, did a hinging lid. I could have just set it on top there and bolted the seat over it, but Things are a little too close in there. So what I did is I made a little support back here and on the front panel, I notched it out. So this actually sits right in there and is located. Then this folds down, toilet seat mounts on there, which I've yet to mount. And that gives us that extra three quarter inch of space. As far as the diverter goes, I have this that I made. So, as you can see, the um, black tank where the toilet mounted is down there. So that's open into the black tank where we're going to divert our urine to. I've made this plate that I drilled holes. And I'm going to put that over that flange, drill some holes and screw that down good. I'll seal it around the flange with uh, silicone and then screw it down so that'll be good and sealed to the tank. Um, I made a hole through that flange. I made this flange out of um, uh, a Lumacore, like signboard. I got a, a barbed ABS connector, one inch to one and a quarter. The diverter is I believe one and a quarter. I haven't tried it yet. Yeah, so the one and a quarter fits tight on there. So that'll stay on, hopefully, should. It's tight. So we'll have the hose. Hopefully I can get this hose nice and nice enough to manage because the plan is well, if we can get a little bit of slack in the hose, we don't need much. We can lift this off to the side and then our bucket can come out. So we did our uh, about a thousand kilometer trial run. We spent three nights in the truck camper and the Composting toilet was somewhat of a success. The diverter was a bit of a fail. The hose arrangement, this was the end of the roll hose that I got and it had a real good curve to it as you can see. And I got it nice and hot when I put it on, 
bent it, put it on the diverter, and figured once it cooled it would stay in that position. And it didn't. It slowly came back and it unhooked. So now on the road I bought a 90, which kind of made it hook up and stay there. Not securely though. And um, this uh, attachment with the two hoses on the fitting, it's kind of what I had that I made work quickly, but it didn't work. It came loose. So um, it's not sealed. And um, so Marianne had the idea, why don't I just make it a rigid ABS and then the diverter sits onto that. So then the, the little spout from the urine diverter doesn't actually plug onto the hose, it just sits in the ABS and the ABS is mounted solidly. Then even if we take the diverter out to wash or whatever, everything stays in place. So that's a good idea. And I have a new ventilation idea. I know usually with the compost toilets, they just put a fan in the wall and it blows everything out. To me, then it just blows everything out of that area where the compost toilet is, but it pulls in air to that area. And that air could come out of the black tank because your urine hose is open to the black tank. So you're creating a negative pressure on the other side of that hose. And then the inlet to the black tank is the vent stack out of the roof so basically you're just pulling fresh air from the roof through the black tank into your bathroom or the toilet area and then out the side and blowing it on people's faces that are walking by i guess i would much rather have it going the other way out through the vent stack so i have an idea so I didn't have a big enough hole saw, so I had to drill a couple holes and then jigsaw it. But I got a circle there, and my uh, I made it nice and tight. So this I have this, uh, this is a sink flange fitting. This little guy will thread into here. I'll put a bit of silicone on it. It actually threads in pretty tight. I'll bottom that out on there with some silicone added, and then the... Uh, the collar will go on nice and tight from the other side and so I'll be able to go ABS right in that'll be nice and sealed so that'll be much better then I'm probably gonna do 45 and another 45 to get it I have to kind of get it over and up and then I'm going to attach that pipe right to the front wall of the um, toilet so it's very solid there and then that diverter, I'll get the height just right and the diverter will basically sit right inside of it. That's the plan. So I got some silicone on the flange, threaded it in, it actually tightened up pretty good in there. Then I got some kilt silicone on that side. I'm gonna put this collar on and seal it from that side also. Okay. So that'll harden up, be nice and sealed, and um, now we're going to ABS. So we'll have a better uh, attachment point, more solid than what we had. I'm gonna throw some silicone around the base of this and screw it back onto the black tank flange. Okay, so I made up this ABS pipe. This goes into that fitting on the black tank, and then we got a 45 to go over, and another 45 to go straight up, and then the um, diverter, little spigot that comes out of it that we did have the inch and a quarter hose on. It just sits right inside of this pipe. So I have a three quarter inch plywood spacer on my front wall to space it back a little bit. I'll probably strap it right there, but I'll show you in the RV. I just got to glue this together and glue it onto the uh, bottom plate. All right, so there it is. We got the uh, ABS pipe all glued together. So we do the little jog over with the 45s. I put a three quarter inch ply there just to space it out so it sits right. Probably gonna put a clamp over top of that to hold it so it doesn't move and it's supported well. Then with these little um, circles I made that the indents that the uh, diverter sits in, it drops right into those indents and sits inside the pipe. I don't know if you can see it down there, but yeah, just sits right in there. And then once we close the lid, it's all tight together. So then if we ever need to uh, take the diverter out. It's a matter of just hinging open the lid and taking it out. So I think that should work well. My ventilation solution includes finding power somewhere easy to access for me. 
And I've looked at the wires running along here, but I think they're all for taillight. I do have access in there because I haven't put the wall panels on yet that we're going to put on to finish it. So I had to abandon that. I didn't find full-time power there. So then I went up to the light and fan area and I found, well, I knew there's power here full-time because the fan always works. So I'm looking to get power up to the top of the vent stack. And I've pulled the wall apart in here a bit. You probably can't see it, it's a little dark, but the vent stack goes up right here. I have opened up, I took off the cap on top and I've opened it up a bit. I made a little hole through the wood on the end of this fan, stuck this wire through, and I'll show you what I have up top. Okay, so I was able, I did remove this vent stack. That's the cap that goes on top of it. I was able to fish that wire out that I sent through there. So now I'll be able to pull an electrical wire back and uh, I'll show you what my plan is. So what I have here is a three inch computer fan. These things are pretty much silent. I don't need to really move much air. I just need to create that flow. So this fan, the plan is, this is the vent stack from the roof that seals to the roof and then that little cap goes on it. I need to trim this down a little bit so it fits inside there. Hopefully I can get it trimmed down enough. And this fan is gonna sit right inside there. The wires are gonna go and connect in with the ceiling fan in the bathroom. And that fan is just gonna run 24 seven and just keep air slowly moving that way. So that'll actually be drawing air down the urine pipe. So we shouldn't get any smell coming up out of the black tank. It'll just be a slow, constant flow down that urine pipe and out the vent stack. So uh, I've never seen this theory before anywhere. And you know, maybe people do it, but the other way around doesn't really make sense to me. So this is the way I'm doing it. Okay, I'm just going to run the fan here to make sure I get the direction right. So it is pulling air up towards the wiring. So wiring goes up. Yep. So, wiring up. So the fan's going to sit in there like that. And then this wire is going to go through the roof into the uh, the fan, the ceiling fan area in the bathroom. And then that fan's gonna run all the time in there. So I'm gonna maybe a uh, couple dabs of five minute epoxy just to hold that in place. And then we can get it installed again. Okay, so this is my wire coming from my new ventilation fan. I soldered it onto the existing wires here so I could run a smaller gauge wire over to the positive. I soldered the negative on permanently. So I'm gonna plug this in right now and we'll go up on the roof and see what's happening. And there we go. You probably can't see it spinning. You can hear it. I put my finger in there. So it's gonna spin all the time and to keep that sewer gas flowing up. Or black tank gas, it's technically not sewer anymore since uh, it's only a urine tank. So I just need to seal up around here. I did have to space this up just a little bit to give that fan a little bit more room. And uh, I think I'm gonna seal around the gap with a cap sealant and then I'll do it all with the lap sealant again. So we're looking good. We'll get the wires tidied up inside, get that trim ring back on the uh, bathroom fan. So I've set up my uh, lid for my composting toilet. I glued with PL the beadboard on top of it at the end of the day yesterday and I just let it dry overnight. I didn't mess with it. So there we have the lid that the toilet seat's going to mount to. I just had to modify it a little bit from what I had uh, for the trial run trip. I had to just change the dimensions a bit because I added beadboard around and everything to make it fit nice. I still need to do a little bit of sanding on the edges and it will open like this to access underneath. And now that the glue's dry, I can cut out my opening to match the original lid. I routered the edges of the opening here to make it nice and smooth, top and bottom, and 
sand it a little bit in there so it'll take paint a little better to make a good um, sealed surface. I added a little piece of three quarter inch pine on the front here to give us a little bit more depth. And I routered the front corner of that and the screws that hold it on, I uh, countersunk those holes so we can put those in and then that'll all be painted white and that'll hide everything. And uh, so now if it fits, we're laughing. And then the toilet seat will just screw down on top of that. So the construction work is done in the bathroom. Marianne can hit it with some paint now. And then we can put the toilet seat on and the heater vent. So the computer fan that I put in the vent, in the toilet black tank vent, um, spins really fast. At 14 volts that thing's moving air like crazy, like way more than we need. So I wanted to slow it down. The best way to do it would be with a um, actual voltage reducer, like a transistor style thing. Um, I don't have one of those. It needs to be small, I want to fit it in here. So I'm going to do it with resistors. You don't save any power that way, but it doesn't really use much anyway. Um, it probably uses less than an amp. I haven't measured it, but it's not going to use much. Maybe an amp at the most. I'm, I'm going to use resistors. I only have an assortment of half amp resistors. So I'm going to use a few of them. Um, I wasn't sure how much I could get away with. I was trying to get the voltage down around half, like from 14 volts down to about 7. Um, I found a few 1K resistors, so that gives me about 300 ohms resistance. And is giving me a voltage drop of about uh, 5.5 volts. So we're a voltage drop of 5.5 volts. So that's taking us down to about 8.5, which is pretty good. I don't hear the fan that much anymore. You could actually hear it spinning from in here a little bit, and now it's just to say I can tell it's still on, so it's moving pretty slow. That's like, I can almost see the blades moving now, so I'm gonna say that's like 20% maybe of the speed we had originally, so uh, I'm gonna go with that. Just to me, moving air super fast through the black tank didn't make any sense. All I want is enough to keep the air moving this way so it doesn't go the other way. So all I need is some movement, I don't need much. I made up a connector, a male and female insulated speed connector with my resistors in the middle. So all it is is the resistors crimped in there and that's just going to go in line in the plug here. And if they ever failed we could just unplug it. So here it is, our renovated bathroom is all complete with the new composting toilet built in. We've put beadboard all around the bottom, removed the original toilet and sink to give us a lot more room. I relocated the heating duct out onto the front of the toilet instead of coming out the wall this way. And so our home built compost toilet. Toilet seat is mounted to the top here. We have the diverter that came from Amazon. And a pretty simple setup with a five gallon pail with a bag in it so we can put our medium in there and then just pick up the bag and chuck it when we're ready to change it. And the diverter is piped into the black tank. So we have a solid ABS pipe that the bottom tube of the diverter just sits in. I made some recessed areas front and back. So this diverter sits in those grooves and when the lid's closed, it sandwiches it down so it can't move anywhere. And that's the finished product. We have a little bit of storage under there for our medium, toilet paper, things like that. And I did just put one little latch just so we, when we get on the bumpy roads, the lid can't bounce open and the, and the um, diverter won't pop out of place so it holds everything in place. So there it is, a lot more roomy bathroom with a uh, better 
seating position so you're not jammed in between a, to a towel rack and a bathroom sink. I hear a noise in the bathroom. Painting. Hmm? What? <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>